would, tell me who you are, where you're from, and tell me about how you started Tripoli, if you would, please. Um, I'm Francis Graham from Pittsburgh. Um, back on December 1st, 1964, um, the Tripoli, um, what is, was to become the Tripoli Rocketry Association, then the Tripoli Rocket Club, uh, started in a, in a basement of my home in Realton, Pennsylvania. About uh, seven people were in attendance. At the time, uh, I was uh, still in uh, early high school. Um, I had seen I had seen the space program start, and of course, at that time, two governments in the world, uh, Russia and the United States, were actively em em employed in pursuing space interests. The idea was um, that the NAR, the existing rocket club in the United States, seemed to have a limit. And I thought that perhaps we ought not to have limits, that we ought to be able to progressively build up to larger and larger rockets. And safely, the NAR had concerns about basement bombing and that motivated its limits. Uh, but um, I thought perhaps um, uh, slow but sure progress would uh, would uh, would be okay, uh, and so we we started uh, we started Tripoli. Uh, we started experimenting with very small gunpowder motors of our own manufacture. Um, also, we used model rocket motors to to test out various rocket designs and ideas. It was. Um, it was an interesting time, and certainly the level of creativity was higher than one might have typically gotten in a school NAR section. Uh, very soon thereafter, I was joined by uh, some incredible people. Uh, Curtis Hughes uh, from Irwin uh, joined the organization, Arthur Bauer also, and soon thereafter, Kenneth J. Good, the president, uh, president of Tripoli, uh, join the Tripoli uh, group. Uh, together we began to build larger and larger rockets. I remember a wooden frame rocket uh, that uh, had three engine nacelles called the Condor. It was covered with aluminum and it was in Arthur Bauer's basement. But uh, we had a problem. Uh, we had the rocket, but what would we do for engines? At that time, uh, there were several uh, engines available of amateur uh, make that were somewhat good, caramel candy being among them, uh, zinc dust and sulfur uh, being among them. Uh, in 1969, uh, Tripoli cooperated to make uh, the, uh, a rocket w uh, that was named the Gloria Mundi. And this was essentially a zinc dust sulfur rocket. And we launched it at the Robbins Hunting Reserve near Irwin, Pennsylvania, which was a very large area, uh, approximately a, a half a square mile. Uh, and now it is, it is all housing developments, but at that time it was pretty empty and, uh, and, and was in the late 60s probably the best place in a, in, in, uh, to, uh, in a two or three county area to launch rockets. The, um, the micrograin rocket, the Gloria Mundi, uh, did work. However, we lost it, uh, probably uh, not due, uh, to, um, uh, due to the fact that we didn't have a recovery device. But anyway, uh, uh, we attempted other rockets uh, with recovery devices. Uh, and we had spectacular failures. Uh, I remember the Vicar, which used um, a caramel candy, uh, so, uh, and, uh, which is essentially sugar and potassium nitrate. Um, oh, the recovery device was well constructed. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the engine catoed. Uh, but still, that didn't stop us. Uh, later on, we, uh, we uh, in particular, Ernest Kavinsky, and the Braddock Prefecture built uh, successfully and flown uh, engines of that sort. And, and thus Tripoli, uh, using, um, using commercially made uh, F motors, which were then available, and um, 
and, and motors of our own design in various fashion uh, continued on. In the 1970s, uh, there was a series of, um, of, of meetings, including uh, uh, one, at, uh, one or more at, my, uh, at the school I presently teach at, Kent State University. Uh, this, uh, these were called KentCon. Uh, Tripoli sent a delegation. Ken Good and Curtis Hughes went. And there they began to be uh, to introduce to ammonium uh, perchlorate uh, fuels, um, uh, standard rocket propellants that, that, uh, that, that, and the technology began to spread. However, there was not an organization uh, that was uh, um, tenacious enough to encompass this new technology and direct it and find testing centers and, and, uh, and safety rules and regulations. Uh, so, uh, so we began to talk, maybe, maybe Tripoli was this organization. But how do we get from being a largely local club, although we had prefectures in Texas as uh, as far back as 1969, but it was still a, a rather small organization. How do we get from there to uh, being a national organization? Enter the man of the hour, Tom Blazanin. Uh, Tom Blazanin uh, tenaciously sought to expand Tripoli into a national organization and succeeded. Um, this, um, uh, uh, this man organized launches and perfectures uh, together with many others uh, er, in early Tripoli. Um, names like Chris Pearson, uh, the Rosenfelds, of course. Uh, these, these people, uh, Gary Fillable was also an early Tripoli member. Uh, these, um, these people uh, worked very hard to continue to expand um, a Tripoli into uh, into a, an organization which which not uh, not only began to look into uh, AP and expand that technology, but also of course hybrids and uh, and high altitude rocketry and advanced uh, amateur rocketry in general. Um, when I come out here, I feel I'm in a magical place. Um, I'm only a spectator this year, but this is just. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, as you look at that QP rocket, don't you feel quite a tingle? And Wedge Oldham is, is right. Q's and P's are becoming commonplace here at Black Rock. And, and more rockets than ever are bumping up to the 100,000 feet waiver uh, or near it. Um, we're almost there. We're almost, uh, I, I envision by 2000, 12, uh, S and T motors will become commonplace. Not only will they become a commonplace, that the technology to build them will have diffused around the country and around the world. Uh, uh, as you know, we now have prefectures in Europe and Australia, and soon, I, I think, even in, in, in China, uh, Japan, India. This technology for space access will become ingrained in, in humanity at large, and not merely the province of, 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 of governments or, or very large corporations. Of course, the, the governments and very large corporations with their access to resources will always, always um, be able to, uh, to construct incredible things and um, make pioneering advances. Um, as they are today, but the diffusion of this knowledge of space access uh, to everybody is uh, is what is happening here. Um, um, many other people share this goal and work work with us, of course, um, and and and, then, uh, and uh, that that is also a vital uh, the Maverick Group, for example. Uh, among many. Look at it this way. Um, 
uh, people now know how to build airplanes. They know how to fly. Ultralight technology is all over the place. Naturally, um, uh, people who build small uh, ultralight airplanes and fly them, uh, or ultralight helicopters, uh, cannot possibly um, uh, uh, do anything like a 747. But the kind of knowledge of how to fly will never pass away. It's part of human the human condition. For as long as people will exist, uh, people will know, now know how to fly uh, because this knowledge has been diffused everywhere. And likewise, I hope that uh, space access, this knowledge will be diffused everywhere as well. So no matter what happens in the future, no matter what way the wind blows with governments or economies, um, there will still be uh, the, uh, the, not only the dream, but the means uh, to, uh, to uh, get substantially off this planet. And, uh, and I see that coming very soon. I think, I think when you see T motors being regularly tested and, and S motors, um, orbital flight is not far beyond. Uh, this requires cooperation. You see it here, all of these people are, um, are, are not being paid a salary. They are, are cooperating on a volunteer basis uh, uh, to this dream and this end as these large aluminum uh, rockets um, take off and uh, into the upper stratosphere, uh, higher than the Concorde regularly flies, fl flew when it was flying. Uh, uh, so, so I think uh, that's, um, uh, that's a very positive thing. Uh, so when I come out here, I feel butterflies, uh, go good feeling of butterflies uh, through, throughout myself. And um, I almost want to cry um, uh, tears of joy, really. If you look around, you can see this. So this is exceeded, marvelous. So you would say you've exceeded your expectations at this point? <sighs> no, but it's on target. <laughs> uh, uh, they, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's my expectations. Um, maybe overzealously I felt we'd be further along by now, but but Tripoli is just, it has is, it is done the best it could, really. And it's just, it's just super. Um, yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Hopefully we'll see you here next year. With um, the project. Ah, <laughs> not, not next year, but 2010. I will have every year with a project, yes. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.